Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on information processing in six. My name is Gan Krishna. I'm the national sales manager for TVET for Macmillan Publishers. We are delighted to be hosting today's webinar in which the changes to the curriculum will be unpacked and also help you prepare for teaching the new curriculum in 2022. Our sales team have visited your campuses with approved sample copies and they'll be calling again with more updated versions of the textbook. Please ensure that you get your copy. They'll be coming around in early November. I will also provide links to the ebook. So if you'd like to have a look at the ebook, you may do so. You'll find this under the chat. The platform we're using today is called the GoToWebinar. It's a fairly easy, uh, it has a control panel that's fairly easy to navigate. Um, if you'd like to post any questions, please do so under chat or under questions. And our presenter, Catherine Shuttleworth, will tackle these uh, towards the end of the presentation. Just a bit of bio on our presenter. Her name is Catherine Shuttleworth. She's the AD for Curriculum Services at Nambiti TVET in KZN. She, would, she brings with her a wealth of experience, um, actually 22 years of teaching experience in the sector, specializing in communication and information processing. She has taught both Report 191 as well as NCB programs. She is a subject specialist for DHET, a national marker for communication N5 and N6, and a co-author for the book that's going to be discussed today, the Information Processing N6. So I'd like to hand over to Catherine, who's going to take us through the presentation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session. Thank you again for the very warm welcome and bio information. Um, we are going to be having a look at the various curriculum changes that have taken place with the information processing in six syllabi. And we're going to have a look at um, some of the features of the textbook that will help you in your teaching and learning development. The meeting etiquette, please feel welcome. Grab a cup of coffee, participate, stay focused and engaged. Um, if there's anything you'd like to ask questions about, please take note of it and then we can chat about it um, a little bit later. In this webinar, I want to briefly review and discuss the new curriculum outcomes for the IPN6 and how this is going to affect the learning content and your academic year as well as your assessments and then show you how the, F, the Macmill Macmillan TVET first books for IP will provide you with the support that you need to teach the future of the country in the most effective way possible. The new curriculum for information processing N6, the implementation date is in January 2021. And as you know, the DHET is bringing in updated syllabi as we discovered that most of the syllabi that's out there actually came from 1994 or 1997, and it's no longer applicable today to today's 4IR market. So the general aims of the curriculum is to improve your students' keying in and processing skills to a level of near excellence. Now, not only to become a personal assistant, as we originally thought when this was um, when this curriculum was adapted, but it was also brought to our attention that in the information technology world and sector, they are also looking for people who can type up to 65 words per minute to actually do their coding as well as data capturing. So it's quite interesting that this specific curriculum is being put into place to polish and hone the required skills that the students need to a near level of excellence, which the employer would pursue in his or her search for the perfect employee. And what we are trying to do is to instill a sound understanding of the importance of neat and accurately typed in documentation for the students, for the business world, and the contributions that we make to the smooth operation of an office or an information um, 
call center or something like that. So what the specific aims of the curriculum is at the moment, we need to ensure that our students have excellent keyboarding skills. The accuracy and speed requirements for this level are between 50 and 55 words per minute. There's more comp, com sorry, my mouth is, is working before my brain. There is more complicated tabular work or financial work that is going to be dealt with. And um, we need to have a look at the problem solving skills that the learners need to master this and acquire and master techniques and skills for the workplace and their ability to transfer the principles that they are going to learn into new situations. And very importantly, self-discipline, concentration, loyalty, and work independency. The curriculum has been streamlined. So the N6 curriculum has been streamlined to make sure that we keep the main thing the main thing and that we are extremely re relevant to what the industry's requirements are for us. In the training that we did with the DHET, I think it was last month, we spoke about the importance of the duration of the course that for full-time or part-time students, they have to have seven hours per week timetable, four hours for typing technique, and three hours for the word processing. Um, it's, I cannot highlight how important it is, the time allocation for the subject, because it's critical to the learners being prepared for the national examination, as well as what they have in store for them when they eventually go into industry. As I said, we spoke about um, in the national IP training that we actually had in the last week of August, now that I remember, um, we highlighted the importance of timetabling the typing technique and the word processing as lecturers so that we know that we are on track with what we are doing, not periods, hours. So what has been done? Section A, the typing technique has got eight different modules. We will look at the changes um, in the modules in more detail a little bit later. The sections have been linked to the subjects that teach the same sections in their curriculum. Um, an example of this is specifically your advanced display work and documents on landscape with tables and um, columns. This can be linked to your communication in six syllabus. The financial statements has been linked to the CFS as well as to the financial management course. Um, while we have had a lot of people actually say, what is the, the use of training our students in doing financial statements when they have programs like Pastel and um, I can't think of the other one. But the, the reason why we do it is not everybody can actually afford the Pastel program. So the, it is very important for the smaller businesses to have a PA that understands how to actually key in a financial statement. In section B, the word processing section, there are 39 hours dedicated to it throughout the semester. Obviously, business letters and circulars will appear here, your display work, your financial statements, your tabular work, and then um, your paragraphs in an African language. You'll see immediately it's a lot less than what was expected of them in the past. And this was also because of the amount of colleges that raised the issue that the students had didn't have enough time to actually do typing in the classroom because of the amount of work that they had to cover in their curriculum. The evaluation, obviously, student has to get 40% for the ICAS and at least 40% in the examinations to pass. Remember, this is the minimal. We are wanting students who get 80 or 90%. And if we don't teach them properly, when we are in the lower levels in N4 and N5, they will never ever reach the words per minute in N6. Students must, must, must reach the words per minute required. As the question papers are counted out, um, and students who cannot reach the required words will not finish the question paper. And we've seen this quite a lot. Um, the way that we install this is by doing our draw work and our speed development. Um, a reminder that our touch typing is based on muscle memory. So the same way is that we learn how to play a keyboard or a guitar 
is the same method that is used to teach type, touch typing. It is repeated, repetitive behavior. Um, to make sure that this is actually done, at least one timed accuracy should be completed every week. Usually a Friday is a good time to do it. Students sit down, first 10 minutes of the lesson is a timed accuracy. Um, also what we have seen, and it does work, is other colleges, the first 10 minutes of every lesson, they do drill work and then start with the um, lesson plan for the day. In module one, the accuracy and the speed development, the timed accuracy test now allows for 26 typing errors. This was changed from eight. All students may now use the spell checker function and there's no longer anything that is the five minute timed accuracy test. We keep it up to the 10 minutes accuracy test. In module two, the proof seed, proofreading signs and the typing rules. Un unfortunately, those of us who have been in the sector for as long as I have, have been through manuscript signs, manipulation signs, and all the rest of it. And we tend to stick to what we know. And many of us haven't had a look at the updated proofreading signs and typing rules that have been implemented. So we need to make sure that as lecturers, we have got this information so that when we teach the subject, we are not teaching them archaic or outdated terminology. In the advanced display work, this is a 15% weighting, which is quite big. This is the section that can be linked to your communication in six syllabus and taught at the same time that it is being covered. Um, included in the section are our favorite regulars, like the itineraries, programs, menus. Um, and just a, just a little word of advice, what I discovered is that if your college actually offers the tourism program, they cover aspects like itineraries as well in their syllabus and their question papers have examples of itineraries as well, which is wonderful when you are sitting, setting class assessments or assignments for the students to do. The documents in landscape with columns and tables in module four. This was previously known as documents on fanfold paper, again, an archaic word. We now have changed it to documents with landscape, with columns and tables. Pamphlets on A4 paper using columns and then changing the text direction. These are all, all and always a fun section to try and teach students. With this, it is important to train the student to look at what is available and at hand that they can use or adapt to cover some of what is required. Personally, I like the function in MS Word for pamphlets. It makes your life and your, and your students' life a lot, whole lot easier, especially when you've got your text changing direction in one of the columns. It really, really is something fantastic to look into. In module five, there's been so much debate about the smart art shapes and text boxes because of the level that they actually go into here. And this was covered by us in the national training, where we had a look at the challenges that are facing us when we are dealing with smart art and hierarchies and the rest of it. So quite an interesting and fun time for the students. They actually quite enjoy this. The financial statements. This has um, been added, statements and notes in paragraph form. Um, this can be taught in the, the Excel program or in your Microsoft Word program, um, whichever one is easier. Just as a hint, make sure that you have adjusted the font and the font size in, in the advanced options to help your students as much as possible to get the maximum amount of marks for the section. There is an exam guide that shows you and gives you exactly what your computer settings need to be on for you to teach this subject or this section successfully. In module seven, what has been removed in our tabular statement is the two sheets of A4 paper. Gone are the days when we used to have to align a A4 to another A4 so that we would have an A3 sheet of paper. I still remember doing this on a typewriter. The method content to fit columns has been replaced. 
and the block method and equal column method have been brought in. Your paragraphs in an African language are still there. Again, it's only a 5% weighting. Um, we often tell our students that these are easy marks, so teach this section first and do this question first in your exam. The one of the things that I wanted to share with you is that it can be very challenging to find activities that are in the various African languages. One of the hints that I can give you is when you are setting a question in an African language, there is a wonderful thing called Google Translate that you type in the English and it gives you the African language of your choice. And it can be very interesting to use because some of the students tell me that some of the wording is totally incorrect, but it also gets their attention because they're paying attention to what they are typing. In module one of section B, your word processing, the only thing that is really being brought in here is that we've spoken about the initial instruction. Now, the initial instruction needs to, it's your basics of how the computer works and how to use the different setting functions. And this doesn't have a weighting in your syllabus because it says that it is taught throughout. So we don't teach it all in one go and then go. We teach it while we are um, teaching them to do layouts. The business letters, circulars, and letters of promotion. This is a 20% topic weighting, um, yeah, topic weighting. Um, and it's quite interesting to go and ask students to edit information because this is very much what happens when they are in industry. They are asked to um, edit and change and manipulate information. Your display work is still there, 20% uh, weighting. It's got our usual in that we normally see there. Our financial statements, the topic weighting is 20%. And then our tabular functions, topic weighting 20%. And then paragraphs in the African languages, again, you're going to be asked to do some minor manipulation work with that. Now, what is interesting about this book, besides the fact that I helped co-author it, these TBIT um, first books for information processing are produced by Macmillan and Trope and are aligned to the requirements of the new curriculum. Everything has been checked and double checked by the DHET subject specialists. The books are laid out in such a useful way and the features are there that are going to help you and your students navigate your way through their studies, which is very exciting. The two authors besides myself is Mary Smith. Um, a quick bio of her, she taught typing in high school for 18 years. She taught IP and CP in four to N6. She did ODP level two to level four. She was also the examiner and moderator for different levels of office data processing. And she is currently residing in the DHET examination department. With me, I've been in the sector for 22 years. I trained as a typing teacher at Edgewood College of Education. I've taught IP, I've taught ODP, I've taught communication and English, um, and I am a national subject specialist for IP. And I was part of the curriculum redesign for information processing. Some of the special features that you can find in the textbook, there are overviews, and outcomes for each module. So it gives you a lovely introduction into it. And then to kick you off with your students, there's a starter activity that engages the learner's scaffolding abilities to actually build on what they know and then move into the unknown from that. Right through the textbooks, there's various explanations as well as step-by-step -step methods and screenshots to make sure that everybody can see and read and do what is required of them in the subject. There are very, very clear explanations. And these specific explanations have also been checked by non-computer um, lecturers and people and they work. The activities, Ah, oh, the activities. Each of them have been counted out for you. The time allocations have been put in there. Um, 
it was literally done exactly the same way as what the exam papers have been done which is very exciting for you because if it says that this activity shouldn't take more than 15 minutes and your student is still doing the same activity in three years time or three weeks time you know that they have a problem with their words per minute and they need to go back to doing drill activities with the special features as well there's a lot of vocabulary that has been highlighted to assist the learners and to understand what is being explained or what is required of them. What I am very proud of is that in this textbook, there are so many word, word drill activities. Um, we know that most of us ignore this and go straight on to paragraphs and letters and tables and the more juicy aspects of the syllabus. But we need to take a step backwards and we need to go back to practicing these type of exercises because this is what builds up your touch typing capabilities as well as it improves your words per minute. It just makes it, I promise you, there's enough, tech, there's enough activities here to keep your students busy all semester long. The timed accuracy tests are all information you've never seen before. So they are newly developed. They've got their strokes and the words per minute right down the side of the paper. So you can actually see how many words per minute your students are typing. They can work it out themselves as well. What I really like about this is there are vocabulary notes, there are normal notes, and there are reminders of the different things that you can use, which is great. We don't always have to um, use one method for, for doing things. They have an Afri uh, English saying that says, there's many ways to skin a cat, and this does apply to when we are teaching the subject. There are so many different screenshots, and if the screenshot is of a more updated version of Microsoft Word, there is an explanation that goes with it for some of the previous versions as well, so that we are ensuring everybody is catered for in this book. In the smart art, they have done it literally step by step by step on how to do this and how to use infographics. What I do also enjoy is that we don't leave it up to the lecturer to try and find um, additional information, even though we do encourage it. What we have done right through the book is we have a see it online section so that it actually, if your learner is not with you the whole time, they can actually go and have a look. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there that show you exactly how to do different things in Microsoft Word. And um, honestly, while developing this textbook, we spent a lot of time watching all of these type of videos and they are very, very appropriate for the level of mastery we need for the subject. At the end of each module, there's a summary. So it just reaffirms what everybody has learned through that module. And then there are also exam tips included right through it. So we know what to expect, nothing can be a surprise for our students, it doesn't matter if you have taught them in inches or in centimeters, it shows you exactly how to use them um, as you are going through. It also helps with tricky sections, just by the way. And then at the end of every module, there's a summative assessment. I always tell my lecturers, as well as myself, you need to work smart and not hard. All of the activities that are in the summative assessments for these textbooks have been worked out according to words per minute and can be used by you, the lecturer, as an assessment. So it's also fantastic to, to even if you don't cover it in your classroom time, it's great for exam practice. Um, specifically, I'm just thinking that our native is about to start their exams and this would be the time for them to start going through the summative assessments. There's also a practice exam that I set for this specific um, textbook. It's worked out exactly the same way as what the department does. And it really is, it's an eye-opening experience to be able to do this. 
there is a lecturer's guide. Now, for some unknown reason, some of the colleges do not buy lecturer's guides for the lecturers. And I do not understand why this is done because the lecturer's guide gives you your teaching tips, your plans, answers, mark allocations. It's got work files, solutions, marking rubrics, everything on it. And it also gives like basic ideas, tips on how to teach different sections in different programs so that lecturers can have a choice of how they're going to teach their, their students. But all in all, this is a very good textbook. Um, and I would recommend that you really have a look at it. And we appreciate the time that you have taken out of your day to be involved in this webinar. And I'd like to thank you and hand over to Gan. Thank you, Gan. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing your experience with the lecturers today. Uh, the textbook that you're referring to, I've posted the link under chat. So you'll find it if you just copy that link and save it somewhere so you can always go back to it. So that would be um, a final copy of the book that you'll be able to order very soon. Uh, and now we'll give you the opportunity to pose a question to Catherine. If you're seeking clarity on any aspect of the new syllabus, please, please feel free to pose your question. You can just raise your hand and we'll give you the opportunity to do so. So I haven't seen any questions posted. So you can just raise your hand and uh, we can get started. Anyone? Even if you don't have a question, just a, a comment on today's session, how you received it. Um, does it, I mean, are you clear about what is required when you start teaching the new syllabus in January Catherine, I'm not seeing any hands up. I'm not seeing any questions being posted. I think people must be very happy with your presentation. Again, I think we covered a lot of it in the national training that was two weeks ago as well. Okay, so this is just reinforcement of the same thing. Yeah. Okay, great. But surely there must be at least one question that can come forward. Or even a comment if it's not a question. Catherine, I think we're going to close the session because I'm not getting any feedback from the audience. Or shall we just give them another minute or so to just think about and absorb what you uh, discussed before we close? Okay, I'm getting no feedback. Okay, Lena Dupasi. Yeah, you've got a question. Great. Oh, uh, Lena is just saying thank you. Thanks, Lena. I hope you've enjoyed the session. 
Any questions from the audience? There's nothing further, then we're going to close today's session. Uh, it seems like you don't, you're not seeking clarity on any aspect of the new syllabus. You're all quite happy to start teaching it in January. So we're not going to take up any more of your time. Thank you for uh, making time to attend today's session. We hope you've benefited from it. And as I said, um, we'll be visiting your campuses with updated uh, promo copies. This will be happening in the early part of November. So please make sure you get uh, your copy of the textbook. Thank you once again, Catherine, for an excellent presentation. And uh, if there's anything further, you will receive an email tomorrow just asking for feedback. So if you could just respond for that, uh, if whether you have a question or just any general feedback, we'll appreciate it. Thank you very much. Do have a good day further. Thank, Thank you, you very Catherine. much.